This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Hey everyone, John Raritan here for Nintendo World Report TV. Since its reveal trailer, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD has taken some heat for being a very light touch remaster. Nintendo hasn't exactly helped with this given their relative silence on what technical updates the game would include. Yes, Fee or Fi or however you want to say her name is now much more optional, and item notifications don't pop up every time you reload your game. But in terms of the visual experience, what exactly has been changed? Is it as simple as the Wii game running in an emulator, or are there more changes here than are immediately obvious? Join me and let's take a look at Skyward Sword HD running on the Nintendo Switch. First, a quick refresher on the original release. Skyward Sword targeted 30 frames per second and ran at a maximum of 480p, assuming you had the appropriate hookups. That being said, most players would have played using the standard yellow composite cable to play it at 480i. This means that the game would only render alternating lines with each frame. It looks the same when standing still, but in motion you'd get interlacing artifacts. However, Skyward Sword is largely considered to hold up better than many standard definition games of the time due to its unique graphical presentation. Skyward Sword's visuals sought to emulate the appearance of an impressionist painting. This was achieved both through soft textures that showed obvious brush strokes and a depth effect that altered the appearance of distant geometry. Essentially, the game would take the average color of a group of distant pixels and turn it into a sort of dithered circle. The result is something that looks very much like a painting rather than traditional geometry. It's kind of like a very simple bokeh depth of field effect, but achieved on the Nintendo Wii, which is kind of impressive, all things considered. To this day, it looks great on a CRT, and even on an HDTV, it looks pretty decent, assuming you're using the standard composite cable to produce a softer image. Yes, there is significant flicker when the camera is moving, but all in all, as far as standard definition games go, Skyward Sword's visuals have aged fairly well. All that being said, it naturally introduces an interesting problem when remastering a game that's entire art style was built to mitigate the limitations of standard definition. This is very much a game made to be played in standard def. The results clearly required a bit more rethinking than one might initially expect, so let's jump over to the HD version. Skyward Sword HD on Nintendo Switch targets 60 frames per second, double the Wii's 30, and a full 1080p dock and the handheld screen's native 720p. I have to say, the bright, colorful art design of Skyward Sword really shines in HD, and I suspect this will be a future favorite for showing off the Switch OLED model's OLED screen. In terms of performance, Skyward Sword turns in an essentially locked 60 frames per second from the areas I've tested. I did notice some occasional slowdown during cutscenes that always perfectly matched areas where there was slowdown in the Wii version as well, though it's worth noting the slowdown was not as significant in the Switch version. Still, it would have been nice to see these issues gotten rid of altogether. It's also possible that some later areas may cause some drops I didn't see during testing, but based on what we've seen so far, I fully expect that during gameplay this will be a near-perfect 60 the whole way through. One final note on performance, the Switch version benefits from significantly shorter loading times across the board. While the original didn't have excessively long loading times, there is a very noticeable difference here, especially when moving from an interior environment out into a larger area. So what about the aesthetic? Has it carried over into HD when so much of it relied on being standard definition? Well, yes. And while the implementation has changed to fit the new resolution, the results feel very much in line with the original intention, and to be honest, looks significantly better in almost every instance. To start, that effect that was placed on distant geometry is still present here, though its appearance is a bit different. Essentially, if we think of the original as sampling a 10 pixels by 10 pixels square to create one circle, the HD version also uses that same sample size. However, due to the higher pixel density of an HD image, the resulting circle is smaller. This means that the effect isn't as noticeable on near and mid-range objects, but it also means that the flickering present in the original version is all but eliminated. I should note, this effect is always still present, it just comes off as more subtle due to the change in resolution. 
A surprise benefit of this effect sampling smaller sections of the screen is more accurate representation of small highlights and textures. Originally, because the effect was sampling a larger area, odds are small highlights such as the leaves on this tree would be overwhelmed by a darker green, creating a muddier image. Now, thanks to the more specific sampling, small highlights like this are better represented, preserving the bright, colorful art style and resulting in an overall more vibrant and diverse image. However, as a result of the effect not being as strong for near-camera objects, the textures themselves will need to be significantly higher resolution. To achieve this, every single texture in the game has received a pass of what is likely AI-driven upscaling. Thanks to the painterly appearance of these textures, this technique produces almost perfect results. There are some rare instances such as this railing where I feel the AI has made these presumably metal bars extremely thin, but this is ultimately a fringe case. As a result of these changes, the game preserves its art style while still presenting a significantly clearer and more stable image. I honestly had trouble going back to the Wii version to get some of this comparison footage after I'd gotten so used to the Switch version. It isn't just the environments either. Look at how much clearer the ribbons in Zelda's hair and the embroidery on her dress are. Every texture in the game benefits from these changes. There is one other visual update that I think many will likely miss, and that is that Link has a new model. Well, alright, not the entire model, but certain areas of Link have received an upgraded polygon count. This is most obvious on his shoulders and on the cuffs of his sleeves. It's a subtle upgrade that remains true to the original appearance of the character, but helps smooth out some of the original rough edges. I haven't been able to spot changes like this anywhere but on Link himself, but it's certainly possible, and maybe even likely, that some more are likely present throughout the game. Before I go, I did have one last thing to touch on. When you first boot up Skyward Sword, you'll get a cutscene describing the history of the war against Demise that ultimately led to Hylia saving the Hylians by sending them into the sky. This is, to my knowledge, the only time Skyward Sword uses a pre-rendered cutscene. I was expecting this cutscene to simply be upscaled to HD, similar to those found in Super Mario Sunshine in the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection. However, it turns out that they actually pulled up the original files and re-rendered it again from scratch. How do we know? Well, because they modified one of the keyframes. Here, as we see people running from the monsters of Demise, I noticed that I couldn't quite get the shots to line up. Turns out, that's because one version has this camera move as linear, and the other uses easing between the two keyframes. For those of you not familiar with animation, to move an object from one point to another, you need to set a start and end point. These are your two keyframes. Your software can then interpolate between those keyframes using a few different methods. It could perform a linear move from one keyframe to the other, moving at a constant speed, or it could use easing to slowly accelerate out of one and then gently slow down as it reaches the other. What we see in this cutscene is that the movement curve between these two keyframes is different between the two versions. Was this intentional? Was it an accident? Who knows? But it gives us a very definitive answer to say that this is indeed a new rendering of this shot. Honestly, I'm surprised Nintendo kept track of this project file and was able to just load it up and re-render at a new resolution and frame rate. It's kind of cool from an archival standpoint, as a lot of times these pre-rendered projects are just lost to time. But that's about all I've got for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD on Nintendo Switch. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like, and consider subscribing to Nintendo World Report TV. Keep an eye out for our full review of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, or if you want, just go check out our review of the original from 2011. We've been around for a while. If you have any questions about this version of the game, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at JTS992, and while you're there, follow Nintendo World Report as well, Nintendo underscore NWR. Check out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more, join our Discord and chat with us about this or anything else, and as always, I will see you next time. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.